car. So if you're in Rowan, um, Cabarrus, um, Anson, Stanley, Richmond, Union, Chesterfield County, stay at weather aware for the next hour, hour and a half. If you're west of there, these counties, you're clear from severe. You're not clear from the rain. There's still a few showers, but the severe threat is moving with those. So that's the good news. We can give you the clear from severe on the back side of this as this pushes off to the east, guys. So some encouraging news, but a couple storms still to keep an eye on. Um, Union County in particular, I'm watching that one down there. I'll show you the one I'm talking about. It just moved through Waxall. These storms down here around the western side of Union County, as well as this storm down here towards um, Jefferson in South Carolina, which is in the western part of Chesterfield. Those two storms definitely got to watch those as well as they push northeast. And Brad, I, had, I don't think I've, I know you've said this before, but I hadn't heard you say on air just yet about grabbing a helmet, especially with yeah. the debris signature that we had on the radar, right? So can you kind of go through some of that information again for folks that are, you know, maybe in the path of the storm? Yeah, so if you're in the path of the storm, we always tell you to go to the lowest level of your house, the most interior room. Um, if your house, this will peel it back and show you that green room is where you want to go. Get to that room. Now, if you have a helmet, put the helmet on. The number one injury from tornadoes, 80 some percent of tornado injuries and fatalities, guys, are head trauma. Huh. People get hit in the head with stuff. It's either falling on you from the house you're in or it's debris being blown at you. Okay. So protecting your head is the most important thing. And remember in school, when you do tornado drill, what do you do? Go the hallway, cover your head, okay? Well, don't use your arms, use a helmet. <laughs> the helmet <laughs> works better than your arms, right? So use the helmet and that's why we tell you. And it does work. We've seen cases in Alabama, Tennessee, where kids have put their peewee football helmet on and it has saved their life because they've been hit with a two by four, or some other piece of debris on that helmet has literally saved their lives. So I know it seems weird, but it's actually a great safety tip and it makes sense when you think about it. Good news guys, tornado warning has expired. Only warnings we have left are severe thunderstorm warnings for Catawba, Davie, Iredale, and Rowan County till 815. Okay, well that's some good news to hear. Of course, I know you're gonna be keeping an eye on this. Uh, we know that the tornado watch is going to still be in effect for a little while longer. Yes. So we're gonna be here to keep folks aware, weather aware, of course. That's right, and our team of meteorologists, of course, will be watching it for us as well. Before we go back to your normal programming though, we are following more breaking news. CMPD says they have taken two juvenile escapees from Cabarrus County. Yeah, folks, we're hearing uh, they were able to take them two into custody after a short chase. Uh, police ended up um, catching them after they crashed their vehicle into an actual CMPD patrol car. The good news is no one was hurt. That's right, and our Austin Walkers continue to follow this story. We will have the very latest for you at 11 o'clock, but for now, we'll return you to programming.
Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We're going to continue our stream online. We were tracking some tornadic uh, storms that had warnings with them. In fact, the one storm we were watching was over Maiden earlier. And I tell you what, we had a view of it from our Dallas camera. We saw lowering. There's a rotation on radar. Watched it carefully. And by the time it started weekend, the warning came out and it stayed up for about 45 minutes. That storm has now moved into Iredell County and is moving to the north. We do have some tornado warnings to our north. And uh, for folks watching online, if you're in Surrey or Wilkes County, this storm has had a confirmed tornado with it. A debris signature was spotted on radar. That means the radar actually detected the debris being lofted into the air by the radar. So the radar can confirm an actual tornado when we see debris. The unfortunate part about that is um, that means the tornadoes are already in the ground. Oftentimes, tornado warnings are issued based on rotation because you're trying to get ahead of it. Forecast the tornado forming before it touches down. Remember, by the time it touches down, you, the warning's kind of late for the people that the debris is being lofted around. But it does matter that that is a confirmed tornado. The one to the south, no confirmation yet, but we still have severe thunderstorm warnings for Catawba, Davie, Iredale, and Rowan counties until 815. That orange outline those are uh, severe thunderstorm warnings that have what we call a tornado tag on them. And what that means is these aren't normal severe thunderstorm warnings. These are severe thunderstorm warnings for 58 mile per hour winds and one inch diameter hail. But also when they have that orange, that means they have a tornado tag with the possibility of producing a tornado with a little or no warning. So when you see those types of warnings, you almost have to treat them as like a pre tornado warning, like there's a heads up that that storm could produce a tornado. So take them very seriously um, until these storms move out. There's a new tornado warning just issued uh, for this cell now in Stokes, Surrey and Yatkin County till 815. So that's a new warning um, just east of I-77. So this is traveling to the northeast. The speed on these I, so far, I'm just looking at the radar. The radar can tell us how fast they're moving uh, up to 40 miles per hour now. So they're picking up some speed. Earlier it was about 35, 36 miles per hour. Um, let's look at the um, rotation in here. I'm gonna look at our radar quickly just to see, because I've been watching a couple storms in, in Union County. Ooh, in Union County, this storm in particular, right here in Indian Trail, right on 74, kind of where the bypass, the new toll road is that goes around um, down, down to Monroe, heading towards Unionville. So there is some rotation in there right now. We gotta keep an eye on that one. Those are the two that I really, in our area I'm, I'm most concerned about because there's one down here in southeastern Union County. This is Anson County. This is Stanley. And so south of Marshville, east of 601, um, heading out um, towards, uh, I think Peachland's out that area, Ansonville, Marshville, Wingate's just about right there, Monroe, um, Wadesboro right there, and then heading up towards Ansonville, Norwood, um, those areas in the southern part of Stanley County. Got to keep an eye on these because the environment here is still somewhat favorable for tornadoes, so you gotta be careful that we don't see a spin up. The time is 740, that's important because I have sunset officially at 753, so once the sun does go down, we got about like 45, 50 minutes of twilight, still some heating, it takes about another hour for it to really start to cool down. Um, that's when things should calm down. To the north, we'll look at the radar. I'm gonna look out of the Blacksburg, because getting north, you gotta start looking at different radars because you're so far away from individual radar sites. The one thing for amateur people looking at the radar, remember, radar is not uniform. I know on your app and on your phone, it looks like it covers every square inch, but they're like cell towers. The farther away from the radar you get, the weaker the signal is. Um, so in some locations, there's one bar of radar data, not five bars, and so the data is not really good, and that's why it's difficult sometimes to see some of these areas. But you see around Yakinville, boy, that is right there. This is Yakinville 601, there's Elkin. That is a strong signal of rotation right there. There's also one, believe it or not, in Northern Iredell County, east of Eagles Mill. There's no tornado warning for that, but these two areas, the blues are towards the radar, which is up in Blacksburg. So the blues are this way, the greens are this way. So we're getting some rotation right there and right there. Um, so those two areas in particular, no wonder we got tornado warnings in that area. Those two areas are showing rotation all east of 77. So if you're in Eagle Mill, it's on you right now. But Yakinville, Forbush, Rock, Rockford, Shoals, anywhere here going on. I think this is uh, this is 421. 421's here. This is 268, I believe, up here. 601's there. So you're going east. So east of, uh, of Elkins, heading up towards Mount Airy and pushing north. So just a heads up, those potentially could be tornadic storms. There's only one tornado warning for this, but this cell right here as well as got some rotation. So 
Winston-Salem's right here. Um, this is Davie County down here. Um, Lexington, right up in this area. Lexington Barbecue, great place to eat, by the way. Elkin, um, right there. Some big old cloud of ground lightning strikes pushing off towards um, the Triad area. So for folks up in that area that are watching our stream, if you're in the area around Mount Airy in Surrey County, you need to be in your shelter location right now. Stay in the lowest level of your house until this line moves through. The good news with this line is once it moves through, let me show you what's on the back side of it. Once this whole thing moves through, we're seeing clearing. So I'm looking north, the storms are moving away. There's some rain there. Back to the west, you can see the sky's beginning to clear. So um, some pretty good news once you wait it out and those storms move through. Let's go back to the radar quickly though. I wanna check the two storms that we've been watching down to our southeast because in Charlotte, good news, everything's gone. Um, that was a quick hitter. And for everybody going to a concert tonight in Uptown, I know you're gonna be dry now. But those two cells, one in Union County and one around Pageland, let's look at the radar signatures there. This one definitely has some broad rotation. So here's Lawyers Road coming out of Ahembe Bridge in the Mint Hill area. Um, this is 601, it's 218 up here. It's a bypass people used to take to get to the beach before the, the toll road was put in. Um, there's some rotation right in here. Um, Stephen Mills Road, there's um, the Divide Golf Course is right over there. So this is pushing just to the east of there, heading north just on the east side of Mint Hill, traveling towards that northwest section. So this is the northwest corner there of Union County Midland right there. Mint Hill is right there. There's 218. Again, if you take a very scenic route to get out to the beach, heads out towards New Salem and then down towards Polkton area. Um, so right there, there's some broad rotation about to cross 218. Um, Old Sycamore neighborhood is right there. Um, traveling east of there, that's the area I would watch for potentially some gusty winds, maybe some lowering in that general vicinity. We can keep an eye on that area. You can clearly see the reds. That's away from the radar, so they're going this way. The greens are going towards, so we've got some broad rotation on the west side of Unionville, uh, right there in the northern section of Union County. So we got the Monroe, yeah guys, can you bring that Monroe camera up? Come on. I will bring up the Monroe cam. Thanks for moving it though. Let's take a look at that because we might have a good view of that. I'm gonna try to see if we can't. We got a camera here. We're gonna try to look north. Um, so it's a downtown one or the? So th there's a view of that. So that's looking kind of off in that general direction. Definitely got a nice rainbow there. I mean, it's been, there's been some amazing rainbows today. So we got the sun coming, there we go. So we're looking back towards, yeah, that's the storm we're watching back towards the east there. That's definitely got an interesting lowering here, but not, it's hard to tell, you can't see much. It looks rain wrapped completely. Um, but I tell you what, that storm is moving. Just like this real time. So you're seeing the movement of the storm. Um, zoom in on our cell tower there so yeah so that storm hard to tell at one point we had some good visibility with these storms but now it's a little more difficult um, i'm going to pull up the other one as you're doing that in there see so here's another this is the government center so we're watching that same kind of storm yeah hard hard to tell there's not much rotation in here remember movement in the clouds happens in every thunderstorm we get a lot of misidentified what people think are tornadoes or rotation up and down motion is all common. Uh, we call thunderstorms convection because there's a convection current in each thunderstorm. So up and down motions are gonna be happening, even sometimes swirling, but very slow. Look for tight, fast moving rotation. Those are the ones to be concerned about. If it's really slow moving, like you can see it, but it looks like it's moving at like five miles an hour, that's not something to get concerned about. We wanna see really rapid movement in a very tight, that's what we call tightening of the rotation. Um, in that situation. Go back to the radar real quickly here and kind of show you the view. So we're looking at some different cameras, but the storms we're watching are in, in Union County. So I'm gonna pause the map here. So we've got one, this one in particular has some rotation and this one I've been watching carefully. This one here has just got that, that look to it. It's heading towards, I mean, right around Unionville. 218's right there, so it, the, the rotation's probably here by now. The radar scans once a minute, so um, that's where it was when the scan came across, which could have been up to a minute ago, so it's likely somewhere right there, probably right there. So yeah, we've got one camera. So looking north from Monroe, from our camera, we probably got a pretty good view of that. So let me see if I can, I'll flip back to that camera. 
Yeah, let me let me fix this. You think you're right. It looks like there's something. Looks like it's too zoomed in. I'm gonna edit this. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm gonna fix it. Okay, let me fix this because it does look like it's messed up. Um, there we go. So that's the storm we're looking at just to the north. I'm gonna, it's gonna mess up for a second, but we'll reload it. Yeah, it looks like Scud, you're right, James. I, looking at that, there's nothing, like people will often see, what is a Scud cloud? It's like a low fuzzy cloud. The more fuzzy it looks, the less ominous it is. Because think about things that are rotating get more smooth, they get more laminar. Um, so you don't wanna see fuzziness, that's not, that's not a big deal. The more smooth, of lowering that smooth, is gonna be more dangerous looking. So this is scud cloud here. These are low, sometimes called fracas clouds. These aren't, I mean, they look ominous. We, call them, we, we sometimes call them scary looking clouds or SLCs um, because they're just scary looking. They're absolutely harmless. Um, back towards the southeast, that's a rain shaft. Looks pretty potent there. Um, so we've got a lot of rain in there. If there's a, this would be the area I think right here we'd probably be watching for potential. And it doesn't really look that bad to be honest with you from this direction. I don't even see a mesocyclone or anything. So even though it's rotating on radar, it does not look very impressive on. And that's the great thing about having visual views of these, like chasing spotters, cameras. It's one thing to see the radar. I can envision what the radar's showing, but then seeing it in real life, you're like, okay, the radar's showing the rotation way up here. It's not down at the ground. Because the radar beam goes out in a straight line, but because the earth is curved, the farther away from the radar you get, the beam starts going higher and higher in the sky. And so 10, 20, 30, 40 miles away, the radar beam is now several thousand feet into the air and it's looking at rotation way up in this part of the cloud and not down here. That's why spotters are so crucial to what we do. They show us what's happening down here at the lowest part of the storm. So that part right there, rain shaft in there, looks like a nice little lowering, not seeing much inflow going in. Nothing on there jumps out to me that that's something to be too worried about. I'll just keep a close eye on it. But the fact that we have a, a camera on that is a good, good thing because it kind of gives us a, a sigh of relief that there's not much to look at there. And that was the storm we were looking at right there near Unionville. Home to the, the big Unionville Elementary School fundraiser. They do big barbecue out there, huge, huge barbecue. This one's traveling north on 601, heading up to the north. This one down here, not as strong as it looked earlier, but you could see there is, these both have broad rotation. The reds and greens, in the right orientation show rotation, but they're very broad, they're not tight. The fact that that's spread out over such a big area um, tells me not much rotation. For this to be scarier or more concerning from a tornado standpoint, you wanna see that rotation shrink up and be very tight. So we're not seeing much there. We are seeing some strong winds, it looks like up near Concord. Yeah, we were checking earlier uh, up towards Kannapolis uh, they're still playing baseball, but we've got a 54 mile per hour wind gust here on the southwest side of Concord. Uh, this is Union Cemetery Road. Um, there's Dale Waltrip Way. There's the Speedway right there. So Harrisburg is right here. Speedway, the drag strip. This is the road that goes up to Concord. Poplar 10 up here. University is just down here. So we'll go up the road. Kannapolis isn't too far away. And they're playing baseball right now in Kannapolis right here. And we've got damaging winds just to the south. So Speedway camera has a view of this storm. Let me see if I can pull that up and we got a nice shelf cloud looking that way. Yeah, because the Speedway camera should have a really good view of that storm because it's looking right towards Concord. Um, so there we go. That's a pretty nice looking storm. So yeah, we're looking, so downtown Concord is right over here. Um, I'm trying to orient, no, actually, this is looking back towards Embassy Suite. So Concord is over here, Concord Mills is over here. That's the Embassy Suites and Rocky River Golf Course there. There's the uh, RV and Camping Center. The drag strip is right here. So we're looking back towards that storm. So pretty impressive shelf cloud back there. And that's, that's, a, that's gonna be a very picturesque storm because now it's backlit from the setting sun. But that's the storm that we're watching with some gusty winds. Let's look at Kannapolis. I'll be curious to see <laughs> um, when they start bailing on this game because that storm is heading right for them. Let me pull that up real quickly. So go to our Kannapolis camera. Um, we've got to aim the other way. Yeah, we'll move it here in a second. There's a little delay, you know, and the internet takes a little while for things to shift. 
Um, but yeah, we were looking back towards east, so we're looking back towards downtown Kannapolis. Um, we should get the field. So there's the storm. This is heading towards, uh, ooh, they got some lightning strikes. It looks like they're still playing. <laughs> and I just saw a lightning strike on the camera at the game. Um, yeah, I am shocked. I don't know who's, and that's actually a lightning rod right there. <laughs> that's the grounding cable. Um, so if you ever look, you ever see those little spikes on top of building stuff? Those actually lightning deterrent. So when the lightning hits this part of the building, it gets carried into this cable and it gets grounded into the ground. So that's a lightning deterrent system right there, actually. Um, I can't believe you're still playing. Um, sixth inning. Sixth inning. So they're trying to get this game in just to show you what's going on there. It's probably lightly raining, but man, they are so close. Well, you know what's interesting? They're kind of in between storms. So they're in Kannapolis. The storm is here. There's a storm there, but the lightning is way too close. Um, so yeah, that's, that's way too close. But the good news is these storms are moving and they're gonna be out of here quickly. But there are some really strong winds around the Kannapolis area. Um, and outages have gone up. There's around 2,000 people uh, up near where you were talking about Yadkinville. Elkin has got 125 yeah. people, so uh, still 1,000 people without power uh, or more in Wilkesboro. And we can see from 77, you were talking about people traveling on 77 yeah. up into uh, Virginia. It's still pretty bad up there as well. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't imagine being on 77 and going up, driving directly into not one, but two separate tornado warnings. So you probably think you're driving out of one storm. Ah, oh, it's clear, and then you get into a whole nother one. Um, yeah, that's, that could be really rough. And there's not a lot of, once you get north of Iredell County, there's not a lot of places to stop right. um, up in that area. So, you know, if you're in that situation, a lot of times people don't know where they are. Um, and you might hear your phone go off. Your, if your phone goes off for a tornado warning as you're driving, that means you drove into a warning polygon and the cell tower that your phone is hitting is in the warning. So that means your car is in the warning area. That's the signal to get off the road and pull over. You don't even have to know where you go. Just the fact that your phone went off means you drove into a warning area because that's geolocated based on the cell phone tower that your phone, is, your phone is hitting. So real good idea if that happens. In the past, you would hear tornado warning on the radio. And if you're traveling cross country, you have no idea what county you're in. Now, the great thing about cell phone technology, if your phone is going off and it's based on the GPS location of your phone, you know that your car or your phone at least is in the path of a tornado warning. So it's a good idea to get off the road when you, whenever that happens to you. Well, this isn't in our area, but I just wanted to kind of talk about this because it's something we were discussing yesterday. Even the yeah. Masters, they've suspended play at, at 751 because uh, I, I know some of the storms that they've had, but it's just interesting to see all the effects that has happened throughout the southeast from some of the storms we're seeing right now. Yeah, and you know, a lot of times the, the, the golf will delay when lightning's within 12 or 15 miles of the course. It could not rain a drop on the course because lightning can travel up to, in some cases, we've seen it travel 22 to 30 miles from the storm. So oftentimes you'll hear people, why are we in a delay? It's not raining. It's because the lightning, these storms are 40, 50,000 feet tall in some cases. The lightning comes out of the top of the storm and can travel really far distance. We call that a bolt from the blue, and it's actually the most dangerous type of lightning because it's the most powerful type. So um, there's a good reason that those warnings are given and those clearances for games and for, for events like that because um, potentially you could get hit by lightning. We are seeing some big outages newly reported in the Charlotte area as well. I know this was an area that we, we weren't really seeing any of the tornado warnings focused on uh, when we broke in just after 630 this evening. But it looks like about 2000 folks in the West Sugar Creek area are dealing with an outage with possible restoration by 11 p.m. And then to the south of there, um, I'd say maybe about mm, uh, I, southeast of Old Pineville and Tyvola, so kind oh, yeah. of northwest of the Quail Hollow yeah. neighborhood, they've got a thousand outages reported. The thing is, there's even outside of the storms, there's some really strong winds out there. And as, and what I'm showing you on the radar is this line of storms, but what's producing this line of storms is a cold front, and that cold front is producing a lot of wind. So this leading edge, once it gets out, there will be a few lingering storms back here. These are not gonna be severe. This is the main action that's moving through right now. We're kind of waiting until this gets out. That one storm we are tracking, you know, still has a little bit of rotation. It's near Unionville, Midland, heading towards um, Big Lick there in, Al uh, in um, Stanley County. Look at the radar signature here. 
A lot of wind. It, it, honestly, now looking at it, it's a lot of straight line wind. So there's red and greens, but they're not together. This is an indication of, of winds going away from the radar. So this is now becoming like a straight line wind event right there. So that's uh, strong winds in Midland right now, heading east Albemarle Road, um, out towards Locust, the Red Bridge community right in that area. Red Cross is out there, small little crossroads heading east towards Albemarle. As you go all the way to central Stanley County, um, out in that direction. Cottonville is way over here for the folks over there. You're, you're kind of out of the woods in Cottonville. Um, it looks like the storm to the south is probably going to stay to the south. It's near Polkton right now where 218 meets up with 74 and Anseville. But there is some broad rotation there. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, but that's pretty broad right now. Now, at some point, it sounds like the National Weather Service will come out uh, potentially over the next couple of days, survey some of the damage that could have potentially happened. Uh, we had a picture earlier from a BP uh, up in Wilkes, North Wilkesboro that uh, had partial uh, some of the roof blown off there, Brad. So yeah. is that the next step tomorrow in the, the days following this now? Yeah, and what they're going to do is pro not all the damage will be tornadoes. They'll look at the radar, get the damage reports from the local emergency manager, and then if it looks like there's a question of whether it was straight line or um, tornado, they'll go out and survey it. And I think you're right. I think the area will probably see surveys if we're going to see any at all is probably going to be in that um, area, Alexander up in the Wilkes County. And then possibly, um, I haven't seen any damage though. Reports come from the Maiden area in Catawba County. I, there's no damage in there, so probably no surveys done, but that was the other rotation area we had. Um, and so that's why damage reports are really important, you know, yeah. um, why we want people to send them in, because then it gives um, the meteorologist, the weather service and myself, we get to go back and look at the radar data, try to line it up with the damage reports, and then we can kind of surmise what happened. And why that's important is, yeah, you know, it doesn't help anybody after the fact that, you know, where we've confirmed a tornado. It does help for future warnings. It helps you learn about what the process was and what that looked like on radar so that you know. And also it helps the emergency managers and eventually, you know, if there's disaster declarations, declarations and stuff like that for, for areas and counties or even states where they could get, you know, FEMA money or uh, government money to help you out. But we still have strong winds right now around Concord up towards Mooresville and heading into parts of Rowan County. So while we don't have any tornado warnings, we do have some really strong thunderstorms moving through the area. What was that rain shaft, uh, James? Speedway cam? All right, let me see. Bring up the speedway cam again. Having some pretty good views because the sunset is making for some gorgeous views. So yeah, we've got a pretty big rain shaft. That's that fuzzy area. Uh, you can actually, if you're ever out, and the best way to track rain is to visually track it. I know a lot of folks bring out their phone. I'm gonna track it on radar. But if you start seeing that to your west and it's heading your way, that's a rain shaft, that's rain. You can literally see the rain falling out of the cloud. Um, so this fuzzy area is rain falling from the cloud base. And that's looking back towards Concord. Because um, over here is, is um, this is the, uh, the landfill over here. So this is downtown Concord right there. What was the other camera? So we'll see. Yeah, we're going to see the Monroe camera. Um, there's that big storm in, in Union County. There's a little look at the other camera. Here we go. Yeah, so that's the storm looking off towards the north, northeast. So the sun's setting in the west. We're kind of looking. This is east. This is kind of northeast. So, yeah, pretty good little structure. Not a huge storm. That's uh, over that top right there. That's the updraft right there. Um, the structure of the storm's ready. There's the cloud base. The rain shaft is here. If we're going to see tornadoes, they form back in this area on the southwest side of the storm. Um, and so not seeing much right there. Just had a new warning issued, by the way. So that storm I was watching with the wind in Union County, severe thunderstorm warning issue. So no tornado warning. Um, as I mentioned, it was becoming a straight line wind event. And so there's the storm right there. So um, it's interesting, Kannapolis is out of the storm path, but <laughs> there might be in the warning, their phones might be going off at that game right now. But that's a severe thunderstorm warning for Northeastern Cabarrus County and Rowan County till 845. So it's got a tornado tag in it as well, just because potentially it could produce a tornado with little or no warning. If we look at the velocity data, real strong wind. That's the reason there's Kannapolis right there. That's that little yellow spot. That's straight line winds, but if I can, I can show you exactly how strong the winds are there. Uh, so that's why 
that's the threshold for severe thunderstorm warnings. You ever wonder why there's severe thunderstorm warnings issued? The threshold is 58 mile per hour winds and one inch diameter hail. Um, believe it or not, there's no threshold for lightning or heavy rain or scary looking clouds, which sometimes people think this storm is really bad. That can make for a bad storm, but to get a warning, you need specific criteria and 58 mile per hour winds are one of those criteria. So this is meeting the criteria for a warning and that is moving from Cabarrus County into Rowan County. So heads up in Rowan County, this is heading directly towards Rockwell. The Reimer community is in the path of this granite quarry east side of Salisbury in the path of the storm. But you can see as I widen this out, this is the only cluster. There's a warning to the north up towards Surrey. These are just, these are just regular old showers, nothing to worry about. Once this line moves through, it's it. That's the, all clear from severe. So I can wait this out maybe about 15, 20 minutes. And once this line moves through, I'll loop it a couple times. I'm gonna turn off the warnings just to give you a, a clean view here. There's the line right there. Once this moves through, and honestly, the worst storms are right there where that tornado warning is, up there in Surrey County. Um, right there near the state line where we have the interstates meet up there. A little bit of a bottleneck up there towards the state line on the interstates. These are all traveling northeast at around 40 to 45 miles per hour right now. Down to the south, severe thunderstorm warning till 845 for Cabarrus and Rowan, and still a severe thunderstorm warning for just a little bit longer here for parts of Iredell and Rowan County. This warning, let me zoom in on that, um, right there, that is until 815. So that warning should expire within the next 10 minutes. So the only storm that really is of great concern right now is right there and it is flying. Let me quickly look at the storm track. We'll do one more storm track and then we'll take a little break here. Um, and if anything else should change, we'll obviously do more streaming or break into broadcast, but let me really quickly look at the, the storm motion on this. Uh, about 40 miles per hour, so we're not seeing a lot. So let me track this line. We're gonna track this line northeast. I believe it's, if, let me make sure I've got it at 40. I got, let me change the speed. I had it a little too slow. We're gonna do it 40 miles per hour. We'll move the map a little bit here. Widen it out. Track this whole line northeast at 40. And so I'll get out of the way. There you go. So Salisbury 808, um, Troy 830, Lexington 832, Winston-Salem 850, Kernersville around 903, Deep River around 905, which is gonna be right there. So about nine o'clock there. So if you look at this, Moxville's 815-ish, about right there. Um, let's see, Salisbury currently 808. So I'd say the time I got right now is 806, 820 to 830. Storms are completely out of our area. And we'll see if the, if the watch gets canceled. Remember, there is a, um, a tornado watch in effect for a big chunk of our area until um, 11 o'clock, but I have a sneaky suspicion that this will be canceled early. And the reason I say that, this is the current watch. Once these storms get up here, you'll probably see some of these counties taken out because um, it's kind of a weird orientation. You just got a few counties here, which is it's really interesting that Stanley County's not in the warning and they're gonna be impacted by this. So um, don't be surprised if that watch is canceled. You might get a crawl. We'll put that across the bottom of the screen. Your phone might actually go off as well, um, letting you know that um, we're out of the woods. So let's do a quick future cast to show you what this is going to look like. So there's a look at the future cast at 8 o'clock. Storms are right there. We'll, we'll play this, put this into motion. So by 9 o'clock, the storms are up here, Greensboro, the Southern Pines, maybe a few lingering showers back here and then going into the overnight hours, everything moves out. So give it 20 more minutes, folks, and we should be out of the woods. Kind of ex what we expected today was a quick hitting line once the sun came out, which it did late this afternoon, this evening, and now everything is moving out. Again, we're gonna uh, take a little break here. If we do have more warnings, obviously we'll be streaming on all of our social channels, as well as our app, our website, and if we do have uh, tornado warnings will be breaking into the program as well. So make sure you grab the WCNC app. Great, great tool. Um, you'll get push notifications when we are doing streams like this and we'll let you know and you can um, watch on your phone. Great tool because if there is a warning and you're in your safe location, your shelter location, you can watch on your phone and we'll let you know when to get out of that location. But now uh, we're going to go back to our regular streaming platform. Thank you guys.
to him right here on WCNC Charlotte, making sure you're informed and safe. Hey, where did all my hair go? Experience the difference. You can see those dark clouds in the background, as we said before. We're keeping you weather aware as we track some rain and winds and storms moving through the area. Meteorologist Chris Mulcahy joins us now with all the details. Chris. Thanks a lot, Sarah. This is the only time I'm going to be wishing that it looks gloomy and cloudy through most of the day because the more sunshine we get, we remove those darker clouds. That allows things to destabilize where the sun is the biggest.